Okay, um, I thought it'd be interesting to show you what's happening with this patch. Um, so, this particular one, I'm using the modular system, as you can see, there's wires everywhere, but I'm just going to talk you through that at the moment. The way I've got the system set up, you can see there's two Behringer Craves at the bottom here. They're actually powered on, but they're not contributing anything to the sound. The only reason I've got those set up is there's a MIDI cable coming into one of them. This is how I'm getting the signal through to the system 100 modules. Um, the MIDI goes through, this one's on channel 1. The MIDI si signal tra transfers through to this one on channel 2. And then you can see the MIDI daisy chain in there up to the CM1A module on channel 3 and then daisy chain into the last CM1A module on MIDI channel 4. The reason I've done it that way, I found that if I put in the USB directly into the CM1A modules, it'll convert to CV voltage for that particular module, but doesn't seem to convert it to MIDI, so you can then daisy chain. I don't know if I've got uh, an update to do or something to change in the settings. I'll have a look at that another time, but um, at the moment I'm basically using the Craves just purely to transfer the signal from the DAW um, via MIDI, uh, via USB to MIDI and just daisy chaining them through to the system. So what we've got, the first CM1A module, so this is just so I can play the whole thing from my keyboard. We've got the pitch coming out and going into our voice module here, which is basically um, an oscillator, um, filter and voltage control amplifier all in one single module, so it's internally wired. So that's controlling the pitch of this particular oscillator. That oscillator is going internally wired through to um, this low pass filter and then to the VCA. For the trigger from the same module, I've got the trigger going out and into just firing this envelope at the top. That envelope, the actual output of that envelope with its um, slightly slow attack but not super slow and a bit of release on it that envelope is then coming back into our vca the vca is set to zero so that's going to open and close our amplifier as notes are played and then this is just a very straightforward patch to be honest and um, we've got then the output of that going straight into our mixer module over here so if we want to hear what that individual um individual oscillator sounds like I've still got to uh, just give me a second, I've still got something wired up. Uh, there. There's our individual oscillator from, from that bottom half. Now, also on the same module, I've then got another two wires coming out. I've got the second pitch going up to another uh, System 100 oscillator. Now, you'll see from the, the knobs on this, if you can just see that there, these are tuned differently they're both tuned to C but a different C so this one's um, obviously an octave or two higher um, I've got th this obviously is a, a separate module filter and amplifier module so not internally rooted so we've got the output of this oscillator going into this separate filter and then the output of that filter going into this VCA and um, the actual way I've got the filter set up is fairly similar to the filter on the bottom one but not identical you can see I've got some more resonance um, on there it's just subtly different and I've also got a separate trigger going to the separate separate envelope on the envelope generator which is then firing this one's VCA so again I've got completely independent um, control of two envelopes they look identical, but they're not 100% and there's just some very slight variations there, very, very subtle, but they are different and it just gives me more control. And again, this, then the output of that VCA just goes to our mixer. And if I, you know, bring in both oscillators together, you'll see we get a nice thicker sound from both of those. So that's our bottom half. Of the section. The second module for MIDI control then, this is where it gets a bit interesting. I mean so far kind of going from an oscillator into a filter and into a VCA it's nothing special, it's fairly standard stuff you could do on any synth. I've done it on this because I really like the sound of the the sawtooth on, on these particular oscillators to be honest. Um, 
which is what the top one's set to, and I've got it on pulse width on the bottom one. And we've got a, I should point that out actually, we've got a bit of modulation. We've got a very slow, well, relatively slow moving low frequency oscillator here. And I've got that coming in, just modifying the pulse width of this lower oscillator. So it's got a bit of movement. Um, so this second one, we've got the um, CV, the, we, we, we've got the pitch going into an ARP 2500 oscillator up here at the top. Um, I've got that just again using sawtooth, nothing, nothing fancy, and that's coming out and going into our multi-mode filter. I'm just using it as a straightforward low pass filter. So I've got the low pass output coming in to our mod amp and the, um, the mod amp sadly isn't being used for anything special. We're just using it as an amp. I've got it, you see there, the, the unmod buttons clicked. And again, I've got a trigger coming out of this module, triggering this envelope module. Now the trigger on this actually triggers both sides of the envelope on this module, but I'm just using the, the left hand side to open and close our amplifier again. So this is the left hand controls there on the um, on the envelope generator. Now this is where it gets slightly different. I've then got the output of that. So this is just a single voice at the moment. I've then got the output of that actually go into a mult. So it comes in here, the black cable, and then we split it into three different uh, cables. One of them, this middle orange one, just goes down to our mixer again so that we can hear that oscillator. And I'll just um, set the volumes down on the others and show you what that sounds like on its own. Pretty straightforward, um, nothing, nothing special there. Where it gets interesting is these other two. Um, what I've done with those, I'm sending them up here into the two triggers of the abacus. Um, and what I've done, I've actually played around. I've got, you can see, I've got the the fall section of the slough wide open, but the rise, I've got two different. If you can just see that there, two different settings on the rise, and I've had to kind of play around with these whilst listening, um, because what this is doing is actually subdividing the this the input signal which is an audio signal to basically create some sub harmonics on on that particular oscillator and those sub harmonics uh, are linked directly to whatever note we press so effectively we just thicken up the sound with some extra sounds i've got the out the sum outputs so that's both sides of this coming in going again down to our mixer um Actually, sorry, apologies, not going to the mixer first. <laughs> Initially, we've got it going to its own VCA down here. I'm using the System 100 VCA. And the second half of this envelope generator, which is all being triggered at the same time from the one input, I've then got that um, basically coming out and uh, basically opening and closing the VCA there. So again, we've got some independence of those sub harmonics from the main harmonic and we can kind of change around what's happening there. And I've got um, a slightly shorter envelope on those because I found that when I was releasing the key, I was getting some unwanted distortion. So I've shortened the envelope on those sub harmonics compared to the main harmonic to stop that um, happening. And um, if I bring the sub harmonics into the mix. This is what we're getting for the top half of our voicing. As you can see, that's gone slightly out of tune while, while I've been here. Typical thing with, um, you know, with, basically with analog oscillators, you need to keep tuning them in. So I'll have to have a quick play around with that before we move on to the next step. So all in all, that sounds quite nice. What I've then done from the main outputs here on the um, on the mixer, they go into um, basically my my uh, audio device for the for the computer. Um, and what I've added is a free uh, reverb called Valhalla onto that. And I've got a couple of things I'm going to do. Um, this is with a, with a kind of standard. This is a, a, a it's called. Uh, one of the smaller reverbs called S Cyrus Minor Plate, um, and it sounds really quite nice. Top half. Oh, and the bottom half, if we just bring up a 
would help if I brought up the volumes for it, wouldn't I? So for the bottom half. And that's quite nice. I want to use that for something. But for this particular piece that I'm going to perform in a moment, um, I've actually got a really, really long reverb that, that I found works really well with this called Benson Arizona. And it just turns the whole thing into a massive almost like a string ensemble just listen to this yeah it's got a it's got a huge delay by the way of thousand milliseconds so that's our top half playing and if I bring in the bottom half that comes across quite well I'm just recording on the phone at the moment but that's basically at the beginning of this piece and the beginning of this patch okay so what we're using to actually control the modular synth I'm going to use the key bed of the uh, Novation Summit now what I've got it set to here I've got it on a multi um, and I've got it on one of the stock presets which is a 002 board in Canada now what that has um, on the B side we've got this which I've kind of dulled down by closing the filter a little bit to make it more subtle and on the other channel we've got the bass and the split point because the keyboard split is this C here now the good thing about that is the left hand side as well as playing that bass actually transmits on a separate MIDI channel from the right hand side so the left hand side's sending that out on MIDI channel 2 and the right hand side sends out on MIDI channel 1. When I first start the piece I'll have the volume completely down on this synth so it's not making any noise at all and if I just go and turn on what I've got going on in the door because it's got such a long reverb on it it's playing our bottom half of our modular synth on this side and our top half on this side from this synth and obviously we can combine that with what's actually coming out of the summit itself Okay, so here's what's happening inside Ableton. As you can see, we've got four channels. I've got two MIDI channels set up and two audio channels set up. MIDI channel one is taking, um, the, the, well, the first of the MIDI channels taking channel two from the summit, which is the left-hand side of the keyboard in the summit, and sending it to channel three on the Crave, which effectively means it's our first CM1A module. And the second one is taking MIDI channel 3 from the summit, which is the right hand side of the, commit, uh, the summit's keyboard, and sending it to channel 4 on the Crave, which is effectively our second CM1A module. So that's how we're controlling the modular synthesizer uh, using the keyboard from the summit. On the audio path, we've got this audio is on channels 13 and 14, which for me is the um, output from the Eurorack mixer and um, this one is on channels one, or one and two, <clears throat> which is the inputs from my Innovation Summit. So that's how we get in the actual sound in to be recorded. And as said earlier, on this audio channel, this, this um, first of the two audio channels, we've also got Valhalla Supermassive, and we've got that set to um, Benson, Arizona to get our string sound. I don't have any effects on the Summit channel because it's got its own internal effects and they're just not needed. <laughs> 